discover exciting places to visit, explore your community, learn about new cultures, meet fascinating people, find the exotic. There are hidden treasures wherever you go. Travel, learn, take a day trip in your city, or hike in a rainforest. There's so much to see and share. What are you waiting for? Go on a journey. Welcome to On A Journey. I'm Paul Prado. Make sure to check out each video that goes with our podcast on our YouTube channel, Paul Prado Photography On A Journey. Here we are in this area of the wildlife area. It's San Jacinto Wildlife Area or San Jacinto Wildlife Refuge, whichever way you want to look at it. And we're talking with Tom Trakes and he's going to talk to us about this vegetation and it looks like a barren landscape all out here so if you pan the camera that way a little bit it looks pretty barren and it looks like it doesn't sustain a lot of life but when we talk to Tom and we're going to talk to him right now he's going to tell us about this plant life which helps sustain the wildlife throughout the summer so what vegetation do we have here in Walker 1 well, here in Walker 1, we have uh, alkali bulrush. Alkali bulrush is kind of a good little bit of a food for ducks and geese. Uh, if you notice that, it has these heads, and, you know, you can spin them out, and you'll get thousands of seeds out of this. Um, and it's almost mature now. It'll actually go back into the ground, and um, you'll get actually more alkali bulrush to come up, uh, like the next season and all in that. Um, also throughout the area you got the lower dense stuff which is again the alkali bulrush. The taller stuff is the hard stem bulrush. And then most of all the green that you see that's coming up grass like. If you kind of focus down here a little bit you see all these little heads down here. This is swamp timothy. This is like really great food for waterfowl. Uh, it's an emerging plant species so um, when you ever see ducks when you got water all over top of a pond this is what they're going down after. They're going down after these heads of the Swamp Timothy. Really great, really good food for the ducks and really good habitat for the wildlife area. So you said that they, they form red seeds and... Well, that, these things will get real heavy uh, throughout the season as they start to dry out. The seed will, will they'll get like again hundreds and hundreds of this red seed. The stuff gets real heavy, you know, when you start flooding and stuff the stuff will start to kind of lean down and stuff. So ducks will get in it, they'll eat it. Uh, it's good cover, really the, good cover. The coots the come too? Coots will eat it too. And then when the stuff comes up fresh, the geese like it. The geese will come in and they'll eat the shoots. So it comes out really good with them too. What kind of geese do we find here? Uh, you'll get Canadian, you'll get a few snows, speckle bellies, a uh, few Aleutians. Uh, you never know what you're gonna get out here. Okay, this is hard stem bulrush. This is just great cover for the wildlife area. This is great cover for ducks, shorebirds, um, everything that comes out here. This like even like we just had our nesting season, when you get a bunch of baby birds like we have up in the other area, bunch of baby ducklings and stuff. If you can kind of tell, this is kind of how they meander, kind of hide out in here with the water and stuff. So um, again, we kind of transplant this stuff. We kind of take it different areas on the wildlife area and kind of put it into ponds, but really good habitat for the wildlife area. This is some of the stuff that comes out of the hard stem bulrush. Um, again, all types of birds, they feed off this stuff. We get the tricolor blackbird, we get um, all songbirds and stuff, and they come up here and you just see, look at all the seed. This is what they like. Okay. Well, like Paul was just telling you, this is kind of like our, our spring summer wetland. You know, everyone knows that San Jay, uh, we bake out here. Yesterday we were about 113 degrees out here yesterday. Um, we dry out a, probably 75% of our wetlands out here. So we got to have some, some water out in the wildlife area to kind of help out with the shorebirds and some habitat out here because we have a lot of tricolor blackbirds. 
lot of ducklings that are still trying to make it. So we put a little water out here for them to be able to make it. Uh, we'll run this water and make it like a mud flat and probably run it through the end of next month, kind of keep it a little wet. Uh, we'll start getting some vegetation to grow. It's also really good for like getting into waterfowl season. We'll get a lot of green that will start popping up. Might bring out the early speckle bellies that come out early uh, for the early migration. But really good habitat for the wildlife area. We've got a couple dove flying right over us right now. So it kind of shows you a little bit of how the wildlife area just, I mean the wildlife just loves. Got to put a little water out. Uh, kind of help it out out there okay this is the kind of habitat that we're trying to create with our kind of our wetland that we're it shows like a lot of water coming out right now but what ends up happening is that you just turn this into a really nice mud flat and this actually just you know the ground has been dissed uh, the water comes up and you what does up, disc mean you taste you, we come out with a disc with the tractor and we turn the soil so we come out turn the soil get everything kind of loose out here and this actually breaks up the you know the the uh, the soil really really good and that kind of brings up the insects there's gophers out here so you'll start seeing all the uh, like the great white egrets out here you'll see like the blue herring you know they'll all come out here you all you already seen all the the ravens and all that that come out but everything will be attracted to us and it's a good food source you know so uh, uh, real valuable habitat during the summertime out here at Sanjay Okay, here at San Jay, that everyone's got to be remember that we use uh, reclaimed water out here, which is uh, brought out from um, we get it pumped in from EMWD. It's wastewater, so it's uh, it's really treated. It's called tertiary water. Uh, anytime anybody comes out and visits the wildlife area, you want to make sure that you're not in here, you know, swimming in it, pulling yourself down. Obviously, you don't want to be drinking it. We have proper signage all throughout the wildlife area. When you come through the entrance, we have big old signs out there. It tells you the kind of the warnings and all that. That you know, don't get into the water. You know, it's here for the wildlife, uh, and it's just be cautious and uh, don't get into it. Do you hear that? It's a marsh wren. There are crickets chirping right now here at the San Jacinto Wildlife Area. This is a water control structure or gate or a screw gate you can see that it screws down this controls the flow of the water from one area to another it go it could go back or forth sometimes you see giant hoses along the pathway the folks that work here at Santa Cena wildlife area uh, really bust their chops keeping this place up for wildlife enthusiasts hunters, fishermen. You can't fish here, here per se, but at other lakes that you can in the area. But birders and other folks that come out here and enjoy the day, they've got these um, well manicured roads, gravel roads, dirt roads, uh, compost or uh, combination roads for equestrians, cyclists, uh, just walking. And you hear the marsh ranch just chirping away. It knows it's a safe place to be. The folks that work here at Santa Cena Wildlife Area make it that way for us to enjoy. I've been coming here over 20 years. It pretty much sounds the same. It pretty much looks the same. Sometimes you'll see the habitat change, um, but everybody's still here. Damselflies, dragonflies, American bittern, red-winged blackbird, uh, tricolored blackbird, pop bobcats, raccoons. Ospreys, eagles, golden eagles, bald eagles, uh, harriers, you name it, it's here. But the folks at the wildlife area are really cool folks. I see them all the time when I'm driving around. If you see them driving around and wave, say hi, say thanks. Um, they just recently, with the assistance of the hunters of the club of this area, the wildlife area, they put in handicap ramp and they put a handicap structure for the bathroom. So many parts of this park are handicap accessible. So everybody can, can, can come out here and enjoy uh, this public land, this public area where like today, like I said, as you can see, I'm boiling, but it's still a beautiful place to be. You've got a lot of cattails back here. They're about six feet, seven feet high. 
maybe even eight feet. You can see the sun's dried them out. It's really getting parched out here. The uh, stalks are brown. But here I'm near mule fat. I don't know the scientific name, and this is called curly dock. I don't know the scientific name on that either. But what's unique about these plants is that this, they're auburn. They're small, spherical, kind of spirally, uh, cinnamon brown, very thin stalks. And from what I understand, they're like a water indicator to show you where the water line was out. To sh um, because once the, the water's evaporated and then the land is now parched and dried, you can see it's really hard. It's a really hard surface. These plants come up to let you know uh, where the water was, how far it was when we had that huge rainy season. And this uh, mule fat provides cover like the tulies do. All this really provides cover. It provides habitat for all the animals out here. The mammals as well. We've been talking a lot about birds. Uh, a couple times I mentioned damselflies, dragonflies, but you've got all kinds of insects, ladybugs, you've got you name it, it's out here. Grasshoppers, uh, California kings, you've got rattlesnakes out here, gopher snakes. This dense cover provides a nice habitat to, uh, to live and thrive. And if you pan over that way and you zoom in, you can see the tulies way over there, that patch over there, you can see that it's still green. So if you could zoom in on that, um, you got it zoomed in there, it's green. So that means there's more water. This, it, you could see that it's not totally dried yet. So the mule fat, um, the curly dock, the swamp timothy, um, other plants when you come out here, uh, alkali, uh, grass, you come out here, and I've been out here two decades, more than two decades. I don't know the name of these plants. So it's really fascinating for me to learn something. Hopefully I'm teaching you something uh, by this, about the San Jacinto wildlife area. The hunters come out here during the hunting season for the waterfowl. A lot of them are well educated. A lot of them do know about the habitat, the different kinds of uh, bushes that are here, the tulies, the scrub, and they know the indicators as to where they need to be and what they need to do to get what they want done. They're also out here helping too during volunteer days and other days where the wildlife area sends out a flyer saying, hey, we need the public's help. Can you guys come on out for a cleanup? So if you want to find out more, uh, check out the San Jacinto Wildlife Area website to see when they're going to have a public day where they might need your help to come on out and clean. We all need to do our part. This is a willow. I didn't know that. I'm learning something every moment that I'm out here. I've got tricolored blackbirds singing behind me, red-winged blackbirds, tricolors flying over my head. You still hear crickets in the mid-morning sun, and this cottony, light as a feather, willow. You can feel the seeds inside. Come out to the San Jacinto Wildlife Area and walk around, stay quiet for a moment, hear the breeze, listen for the wildlife, and just appreciate where you are. You have to check it out. At the L Reservoir here at San Jacinto Wildlife Area, this body of water as you can see if you pan around that way it's shaped like an L hence the name the L Reservoir. This reservoir will be maintained and water will be kept in it. It provides water for the wildlife but now we are in June and it's fire season and as you can see the land as I said a second ago is very parched very dry the brush is very brittle so you know it's, it can be fuel that can be ignited and just escape quickly. The firefighters and the firefighting departments have this a reservoir to go to. This provides habitat and needed areas for the dragonflies, the damselflies, and the other insects that live within the reeds and in the dense brush. Sometimes when you're hiking around there, you can even hear the huge dragonflies trying to make like a buzz noise. It's kind of frightening. 
What's kind of comical sometimes is when you walk by the ponds and you see some of these dragonflies just clinging for dear life. A really uh, highlight of this year, this summer and spring, spring and summer, was the yellow-headed blackbirds that decided to uh, make themselves visible throughout the marsh. Yellow-headed blackbirds got a beautiful yellow, bright yellow head and a nice black, jet black body. There were uh, dozens and dozens of them, if not hundreds, throughout the wildlife area and the marshes. Uh, they croak. They've got this like, rawr, rawr. What was spectacular for me this year were the tree swallows. The tree swallows were there in the thousands. They were feeding off all of the insects that were flying around the ponds and in the dry areas and in the wooded areas of the San Jacinto Wildlife Area. And then they congregate on these power lines. So if you're watching the video, you'll literally see thousands and thousands of uh, swallows, tree swallows. I'm sure other swallows are mixed in with the bunch. They're swift and they're fast. Sometimes when I was there, uh, I would see the swallows by a ditch. And I would caught this red-winged uh, blackbird uh, taking a bath and trying to preen itself. And the swallows are just diving in on it. Out there in the Walker Ponds, if you're watching the video and listening to the podcast, you'll see uh, several dozen white pelicans. These large, large pelicans are obvious because they stand out. They have black flight feathers and a very large bill. Their beak is almost a foot long with a 10-foot wingspan. They're not divers like the other pelicans, the uh, California brown pelican. Um, and they're, they're just, it's just a beautiful bird to see. The glossy ibis is a common bird that you're going to see if you go out to the San Jacinto Wildlife Area with its iridescent greenish-blue wings. They are scavenging anything that they can find in the mud flats and in the water that's available. The water that's being uh, placed there this year by the San Jacinto Wildlife Area crew is really a benefit for the birds that are sticking around. Another wading bird, wading meaning you can wade through the water up to knee deep, is the avocet. Its bill swishes side to side in the shallows searching out insects and small crustaceans. You might even see two or three of them uh, dancing about as if they're being choreographed. On my recent trip I got to see a really beautiful great blue heron, this blue grayish tall wading bird. Uh, you might see one too. This year, as I was crackling through the brittle vegetation, I was surprised by a bunch of Baja California tree frogs that were just coming out of the parched, cracked earth in droves. They're tan, they're sort of a reddish color, they have these distinctive dark stripes on the side. Um, they're nocturnal and they try to escape the heat by living in the cracks. I came across them when we were going out there in the evening. I even managed to catch a green one on video before it hopped away into the thick brush. In the heat of the day I spotted a raccoon munching on what looked like a crayfish. I found out from Tom that there are crayfish in the area and this opportunistic raccoon decided to make a meal of it. In some of the standing ponds that have water you'll see a small flat bill kind of looks like a platypus it's a ruddy duck the male has a bright blue bill and it's doing bottoms up like Tom was saying earlier about eating the vegetation along the trails and on the sides of the roads you'll see a shorebird that's pretty large for a shorebird it's the long billed curlew it's brown a very long curved bills curved downwards as they probe in the mud flats and in the sands of the uh, banks. They're gregarious, so they're in flocks. You'll see them in the upland game area and in around the wildlife area. Kestrels, this cute little bird you'll see. It's a cute little falcon, but it's not cute to uh, dragonflies and other small insects that this little kestrel likes to eat. Um, on my video, if you're watching, he's eating the remains of a northern shoveler, it looks like, that was abandoned by another bird of prey. One of my favorites is the raven. It's not a crow, it's a raven. Check the tails. 
Um, it's a scavenger. It's also a predator, predatory bird. But uh, in my opinion, I think it just prefers to scavenge. They eat whatever they find, squirrels, birds. Um, I have video of them eating a coot, gray squirrel, and other animals along the wildlife area. They are, they, they use every part of the body. If you're watching the video, you'll see them taking the sinewy muscle from some of the legs of the birds they're eating. A favorite of a lot of birders, because they're usually very prevalent, is the great egret. It's a big, tall, white bird. It's uh, there's a, the cattle egret, the snowy egret, and the great egret. Cattle egret's got that rufous red on its head. Um, snowy egret, black feet, yellow beak. And the great egret stands majestically tall with its beautiful white plumes. Another small predatory bird is the loggerhead shrike. It impales its prey on twigs, on wires. It wears a black mask and it's silver or gray. The merlin kind of looks like the kestrel except it's got bluish black feathers and it's mottled meaning spotted. Kind of looks, it's a falcon. Very swift. Uh, if you're watching the video you'll see it um, making quick work of uh, its prey on a branch. Uh, it goes into, it flies low, fast, and can um, get their birds near the ground and it plucks them out of the air. One of my favorite and a lot of people is the Northern Harrier. We used to call, it used to be called a marsh hawk. It's got a white band on its rump. The male is silver or gray. The female is brown. They've got like white eyebrows. Uh, it's a hawk. It uh, kills uh, coots, ducks, rabbits, squirrels, gophers, anything that it can get in its talons and anything that it can uh, land at the side of the road. You can see them frequently dodging in and out of trees, uh, going over marshes and trying to flush ducks or other birds and then swoop down for the kill. In the video that I have with this podcast, uh, I've got one eating either a meadowlark or some sort of warbler because I see a lot of yellow and I definitely can't make out which uh, songbird it is. Um, I was talking about the um, shrike and it's also a songbird but predatory. In the evening you might catch the glimpse, you might catch a glimpse of the great horned owl. The tufted ears, those are feathers, they're not ears, their ears are more in their face. Uh, they can turn their heads 270 degrees to find their prey. And in most areas in open land, you'll see the red-tailed hawk. The immature hawks are brown, chocolate brown, and the adults have the red band. But what's been visiting frequently at the Santa Cena Wildlife Area is the golden eagle. It's made it stay there for quite a while. It's got this very large beak and two-inch talons. Uh, they've been known to kill wolves. They'll attack bears. Um, they make quick work of coots. Uh, coots are pretty slow and um, the eagles like to roost and sit up high on the mountains and on the hills up on the craggy rocks so that they get a better view of the entire wildlife area. Their keen sense of sight enables them to find their prey rather quickly and then they dispatch their prey uh, with little effort. It's my favorite song, Western Meadowlark. It sings and it lets you know that it's around. The Western Meadowlark has yellow breast with a black patch on its breast and it sings and lets the other birds know that it is there. <clears throat> it's quite a sight. Everybody that I know, whether you like falcons and hawks, everybody enjoys the Western Meadowlark. It's on the cover of books, it's the logo, it's on websites. It's a very enjoyable song. We hope you enjoyed today's episode at the Santa Cena Wildlife Area. And I hope you get yourself out on a journey. Enjoy the trail.